So, okay, let's look at the second right. game. Uh, you're playing black once again, so we'll keep it. So, I th do you see the white side? Uh, yeah, I do. So need to I'll switch, the board, I'll switch yeah? to the... Uh... Okay, so uh, this so is the boom, second game. And more, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so... Oh, wait, I need to also... I think I need to change the... I mean, my, my viewers, they actually can see the pieces and they see it from the white side, so I'll change it for them as well. Okay, so we look from the black angle. All right, so... Let's start. Are you able to just load in the games from the from the chess.com yeah, that's what uh, I did archive? Earlier. I'm basically, oh. I'm just copy-pasting them here. That's nifty. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And it's very easy with all the technology nowadays to just download all the games. You can even like download, I think, like 20, 30 games with one button from chess.com. Yeah, so, they make it super easy. Mm -hmm. So here... Uh, Let's see, so you're black again, e4, e5, our favorite opening, knight f3, knight c6, the Italian, you play bishop c5, I remember I showed you this trick in one of the earlier streams, you prevent knight g5 by not developing your knight yet because your queen is uh, yeah. keeping an eye on this square. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I was conscious of that or remembered that, but yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, it's a well-known move order trick and I'll just mention that in general you want to develop the knights first before the bishops but in this particular position getting the bishop out first is more sneaky because you avoid this uh, fried liver attack so c3 and um, well now he wants d4 and it looks scary so I realize why you play this move a6 uh, to have this square for the bishop but it is, in fact, not developing any piece, so it's kind of a waste of a move. So, finally, we have some, some mistake from your end. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Shouldn't be too hard to find those, man. <laughs> so, <coughs> after c3, he wants d4, but um, surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, the, the most logical way to follow up is to just develop your pieces. So, if you play knight f6 and he goes d4, then you can simply take and go bishop b4 check. And um, even though it's kind of dangerous looking, uh, it is objectively good for black. And uh, there are some gambits here, but you don't have to accept them. So this is good for black in general. Yeah. And, right. uh, okay. okay, it's not an advantage for black. It's uh, if white wants, he, he can equalize, but he has to be careful. So this is the regular continuation. Another option, just to mention, if you don't want to have any theory, uh, you can play d6, but not a6. And then if d4, you go bishop b6. You don't want to release the tension, as I told you in the past. So what happens now if... Can I take over here? Yeah, yeah sure. Let me take over here. So now what happens if he does this? d5. And I go here, and he goes here. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Never mind. Exactly. The bishop is closed, yeah. so he's not attacking f7. Okay. So after bishop b6, uh, the regular move is castles, and now you go knight f6. Normally they they go something like no. Actually, I was, I think I was wrong, in fact, because after bishop b6 they can maybe play d takes e5 and queen takes d8. So let me just demonstrate this why this is bad for black because now you have to take back probably with the pawn. Now queen d8. King d8, and bishop takes f7, yeah? Yeah, and you lose okay, the pawn. All right. And I'll just quickly mention that if knight e5, there is a very nasty tactic here. Can you see it? Let me look at this, hold on. A very nasty tactic, he says. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bishop check. Bishop takes pawn check. Exactly, bishop takes f7, and mm -hmm. it's already almost losing, uh, pretty much losing for, for black. And, uh, so even if you seven. wanted to do that, yeah, so then now now bishop check, yeah. and it's exactly. no bueno. Yeah. And, uh, well, if it's bishop check, if it's bishop check, then you can just go six. right there, right? Yeah, so you're not losing the game yet uh, by means of losing your queen, but after queen d8, king d8, and so on, 
it's it's very bad so sure. um so d takes e5 is very good for white so bishop b6 is a mistake so d6 as i mentioned and now just because of this concrete reason you do release the tension and then you go bishop b6 and this is the okay. the regular way to play and now the castle knight f6 normally they play knight c3 to defend castles and um, just to quickly mention you want to go bishop g4 next and many yeah. players here go h3 to avoid it but now it's really good for black because of knight takes e4 followed by d5 okay i'm confused why wouldn't he just take take that with his knight then oh uh, okay yeah. i see i see and uh this is uh and now he will be left with an isolated pawn so yeah, h3 is generally not a good idea if he didn't finish his development. So he has to allow bishop g4 and then you have a good position. So we had some quick uh, theoretical discussion here. And uh, now that you know how to, to deal with this opening, we can uh, go back to the game. Let's see if I can remember it. Yeah, all right. You don't have to remember, just uh, you can like play. I mean, just like with the bishop c5. As they say in the Eastern philosophy, like becoming a true master is to know everything, forgetting it, and then doing it with your like intuition, without realizing okay. that you do it. So, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's a good, so, good, good outlook there. Yeah, so a6 was not the best because now he takes over the center, and uh, yeah, he is exploiting it well. Bishop b6, and now castles. Actually, if I were to play on the white pieces, I would try to exploit it uh, in a more violent manner. By the way, um, I'm not sure if my are you, viewers... Are you, still, are you still moving the pieces? Because I can't... It's still on the same... It's um, it's on, on the sixth move for me. Uh -huh. it, Bishop b6 uh, is the last move, but... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about wanna, that, go ahead. I just want to make sure something, if my viewers can see the... Yeah, they can, okay. So, bishop b6, and now, um, so, as I mentioned in the previous game, your opponent was playing for the initiative and he had to strike the iron while it was hot. So, same applies here. You are underdeveloped, you wasted a move with a6, he wants to punish you, he better do it instantly. So, I would consider something like uh, d5 or knight g5, and um, just get the feeling that... Uh, it's a, a good move for a good idea for white to to exploit the fact that that you're not underdeveloped so after he castles and let you play d6 and develop a little bit then it's not so scary anymore so just a quick example is d5 what do you want to play let's um <clears throat> probably 92 there 97 yeah I'm sorry, yeah, 97. So, after, so this is similar to the game continuation that I see in the notation, but uh, now there is a, quite a major difference that you can play d6, and your pawn is not on d6, and this is bad news for you. Yeah, that's, that looks scary. Yeah, and uh, just uh, I'll, I'll explain it positionally for a moment. You see these two pawns here? Even if I yeah. don't take it back, they are blocking this bishop. And this bishop is blocking the rook. So essentially for many, many moves to come, uh, this position is going to be uh, a material advantage for white. Because this bishop and rook will not participate in the game. Yeah, so even if it's not a literal material advantage, it's a, a, a implied material advantage. Yeah, you can call it dynamic yeah. advantage. It will disappear over time, but for now it exists and you can use it to attack. And also he has more pieces out to just regardless of this fact you can just yeah so after cd6 okay you can of course take back with the queen but a nice way to exploit it is to just keep developing and to to bring more pieces to the game and start attacking and maybe play knight g5 next so yeah it just feels terrible and uh <laughs> looks terrible yeah <laughs> okay still some chances but uh d5 is the way that i would consider to punish you and um just to quickly mention, another way that comes to mind is bishop g5. And uh, once again, trying to exploit the fact that uh, you're not very developed. And 
Yeah, there's yeah no... it just looks kind of cramped. Yeah, Everything I, looks I don't see cramped. a move, in fact. I mean, I, I don't even know what black can play here, because if f6, then this diagonal will be very bad, and you will never be able to castle. And um, if you just play... I don't know. I'm trying to... Okay, f6. I'm trying to cancel the arrows, but... Okay, here. So, if you develop the knight, then he has e5. And if you develop the knight to e7, then after d5, you no longer have a good square. So Yeah, well, I mean, I have a square. I could go back to b, b, uh, b8 or a7, but yeah, it's not but the best Yeah, but this is even worse than, than before. Yeah. So, well, yeah, so this is really terrible. And here I would still consider d6 as a nice attacking move for... Um, white which in a sense is a prophylactic move against black playing d6 so this is really bad for black okay so enough with the punishment let's see what he played castle now d6 uh, is a good move d5 and now it's not as bad as it was earlier because after your move knight c7 no. Suddenly your position is quite solid. It's still better for white, but he cannot really exploit it uh, uh, materially. Yeah, I wasn't too nervous at this point. Yeah. So, and both of your opponents had the initiative, and instead of uh, acting on it, they castled in both of these games. So, castling is a defensive move in general, bringing your king to safety. It's not what something you do when you need to attack. So, bishop g5, bishop g4 looks uh, sensible. I would consider h6 first, just to ask his bishop where he wants to go. Uh, so, let's just demonstrate h6, bishop h4, and um, probably now bishop g4. And I'm not sure if there is a difference, but it feels like a little bit uh, more precise. Because you gain would the you tempo. think about... Would you think about castling on the queen side in this spot? <clears throat> uh, yeah, but first, I mean, if, if I it, I had two moves, I would go queen d7 and knight g6 with tempo on the bishop. So, And even if I castle king side later, I will have this h6 pawn as a window, so it was a tempo that I gained. So, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, knight bd2. Looking good so far. Queen d7, so following with the same plan. And now I get the feeling he didn't know how to proceed because he suddenly played this, uh, this move b4. I have no idea why. Maybe he was just thinking that I would castle on the queen side. I'm, 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 I'll bet you, from the mind of, another, of a fellow 1300 <laughs> player, yeah. that's what I would think in that spot. Yeah. <clears throat> well... From my perspective, uh, I'm trying to suggest moves for both of you because we want to learn about the game, uh, not only about your moves. So uh, I would consider developing for him because he cannot really win directly, uh, as far as I can tell. So a good. Uh, let me ask you, in fact, what good developing uh, move you think would uh, exist here for White? So that's, yeah. So the questions that you would ask me in this spot are what pieces aren't working. Mm -hmm. Uh, so <clears throat> probably I would want to develop the queen and then maybe get the rooks to a more active, uh, make the, give the rooks a more active role. Mm -hmm. So maybe something like qu queen, uh, uh, queen C, C2 or queen B3. Yes. Uh, maybe even king, e yeah, break the pin. I wouldn't want to stay on E2. So it'd be between those two moves. Yes. So uh, all of them are good as long as you develop. However, uh, there is something I will mention that uh, I mentioned several times before that you don't really know which square is the best, the very best for the queen. And maybe on the next move you'll have more information about it. But you do yeah. know what square is best for the rook. Right, yeah. You want to be on that on that d-file attacking my queen probably. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is a principle in chess, but this is a generally good idea to maintain some flexibility. I told you about this in relation with the castling. Remember postponing the castling? Yeah, you mentioned this. Yeah, you've mentioned this to me before, yeah. Yeah, so being flexible applies also here. When you don't know... It also applies uh, between the knights and the bishops when you don't know which one to develop. So you develop first the one you, you know where you want to put. So you have an open file, yeah? 
So, I do, yeah. So you can simply put the rook on the open file from white's perspective, and then on the next move decide uh, where to put the queen. Uh, and uh, yeah, this seems like a, a good idea. I think at this point I was pretty committed to casting on the queen side, and then I wanted him to open up that G file. Mm -hmm. I, eventually, I eventually played uh, played knight f6, and then yeah, opened yeah, it up. Yeah, it was an interesting idea. I, uh, I understand. It's, it's very double-edged, and uh, usually uh, we like double-edged decisions if they're not bad, because it creates more action. Yeah. So this is good. Absolutely. So b4... Um, is uh, I think a slight mistake by your opponent. And knight of six, okay, it's the logical developing move, but uh, I would just mention that, uh, like I said earlier, h6, asking the bishop politely where he wants to, to go, uh, wouldn't harm. And if he goes to h4, the knight g6 would be a tempo. So, I feel like- Yeah, I, I just got kind of hung up on the idea of opening up that g file. Mm -hmm. It just yeah. seemed like it was t too strong to pass up. Well, here's the thing. He doesn't have to take the knight, so... Um, right. I mean, inviting him to open up the... I, I know this type of thinking. I mean, uh, that you know that he, you're tempting him to open the file and he might fall for it, so you want to, to allow him to do something bad. But, uh, I mean, knight of 6 is a regular developing move, and h6 is a yeah. tempo. So, regardless of what he does, uh, a tempo is better over not gaining a tempo. Yeah, well, I guess when you say it like that, it makes sense, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, knight of six, and it's, it's not even only one, because after bishop h4, you get another one, yeah? Yeah. So, and then he moves to g3, most probably, and then you go knight of six, and now you can still decide where you want to castle. I would lean towards castling short, in fact, because yeah. he has... I mean, two reasons. One, he has the c-file, so it's scary. And the second one, that generally, when white castles to one side, you want to castle to the same side. Otherwise, he will get to you first with the pawn avalanche. Sure, that makes sense. So, knight of six. Uh, okay, he took, you took. This looks nasty for both sides. So Yeah, I, I, already, like I, already, have a, I already have a near threat. If I can get the the rook on the f on the file there, then I can. I'm attacking his h3 pawn with my queen. Mm -hmm. I was I was happy with this with this setup. Yeah, so I didn't feel too intimidated. Now you, he played a4. I'm not sure what he's threatening, but uh, I mean now it makes sense because as I mentioned earlier, if you say a, then you might as well say, as well say b, and uh, he wants to prevent castling, which is in fact your plan right now. So. In a way, you kind of played into his plan, because now you, you do want to cast along, despite him preparing for it. Well, I figured if he'd push to b5, I would just push my a-pawn to a5. Yeah, but his idea is to play a5, and after the bishop moves, to play b5 later. Uh, so it, I think you might be giving him too much credit, Tal. I think you might be giving him too much credit. I mean, when I say him, I mean the, the pawn on a4, yeah? Sure, okay. <laughs> the pawn has intentions that are objective. <laughs> So, <laughs> rook g8, <clears throat> and now, okay, this is a good idea, to put the rook on an open file, king h2, and now, well, I feel like... Yeah, I think I left my, I think I just left my king in the middle of the board for quite a bit here. Yeah, hmm. the position is very complicated, um, I'm not too sure... Uh, I like this fact from the... I mean, we have a lot of variations here to deal with, but I'll try to focus on the, on the bigger things uh, rather than the, the small details. So here after king h2, knight g6 looks like uh, another... It's not a developing move because the knight is kind of developed here, but it's uh, uh, improving the knight and you don't have any other piece that you can improve. So if you use my yeah. method... Uh, or let's call it the general method of asking the questions, then uh, it would be also my conclusion. He has no threat, which piece doesn't work, the knight on e7, let's improve it. And, okay, he also... I, I assume that you predicted his move, g4, yeah? Um, 
Yeah, I did. That wasn't a blunder. I just figured that like if I could get my knight to this to that's yeah. So if I go so for example knight to f4, he yeah. can't take because the threat is just too strong with yeah. queen takes uh, h3, h3 there. Yeah, I think it's mate in one yeah. even. If... Is it mate in one? No, because he can go to g g1, right? Isn't there a rook on g8? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. As far as I can see, so we cannot even take at all. And he did play g4, which is kind of... I mean, it might be okay, but it's a little bit naive of him to, to think that... Uh, I mean, it doesn't even matter if you missed it, because all your pieces are there. You have four pieces uh, yeah. on the king side, and he doesn't have as many. And he plays on the king side where his king is, so... I would well, I, str I struggled a little bit with this attack, if I'm remembering this game correctly. I was like, I, I, I could feel like there was some kind of an attack there, but I felt like mm -hmm. I just wasn't seeing it. Yeah, so knight um, f4. Yeah. And now, okay, here he played uh, knight g1, which makes sense. He wants to renew the threat on your uh, bishop on h5, so he's protecting h3. But still, I mean, it, I'm not sure if he's threatening anything because there's rook g2 check in mind. So this position becomes very, very nasty for him. And uh, also for me to follow. <laughs> but, uh, it's, oh, is it uh, getting tough for you here? I, I'm, I'm up for the challenge. I'm going to try. But uh, if okay. I say, right. if I, I mean, I would love to, to miss something and for you to call me out. So it would be interesting. <laughs> All right. I love that too, man. That sounds great. So... Let's see, so knight g1, and uh, I feel like in this position, so le let's be methodical, what is his threat? I'm assuming you asked yourself at this point of the game, yeah? So the threat now for him is just to grab that that, that bish, because mm. uh, he has pr enough protection on the on the king side over there to, to block my attack, or so it seems, so I mean I would say that's his biggest threat right now. I'm trying to calculate and uh, to see just what happens if you castle long because assuming he has no threat castling would be a good idea yeah just in general to develop I'm not saying it's the best move but I'm just okay, trying to yeah. calculate in my mind so gh rook g2 check king h1 and now I mean, the easiest move for me to, to calculate is rook takes g1 check he has to take with the king otherwise queen h3 is mate Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then rook g8 check. And I don't see which piece can block, so I assume he has to move the king and then king queen yes, h3 is yes, mate. Yes. Oh my goodness, look at you, you goddamn wizard. Yeah, I knew there was a, I knew there was a mating attack in there somewhere. So but I just like, I, I was struggling to find it. That's a nice little rook take. The rook, rook takes a G1. knight move there. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, you could have done it immediately here, but I like the idea that it comes with check, so it's more forcing. So we gave this check and then take it with check. But uh, So it's not necessarily the best continuation, but it was just a simple line that I would look at uh, in my mind calculating uh, to, to figure out if, uh, if he's threatening anything. And now that we've realized that he doesn't, I mean, at least after castling, if we don't castle, we don't have the other rook to, to join. So we, I would, wouldn't would mind castling. I see in the notation that you played bishop d4. But um, so I guess you are attacking the rook on a1 and you want bishop yeah, d5 as the, well. Yeah, with the idea. So I wanted to bring bring the, the bishop to d4 there with tempo and then move it to, to e5. You're a bit get, of a wizard yourself, of because uh, this is looking even nastier, yeah, you. because you, you kind of do the same thing, bring another piece to the attack, but unlike my move, you do it with tempo. Yeah, So that was, that, I wouldn't have made that move, I think, unless we had done these lessons, because I was asking myself, like, well, what can I do? Like, the, the, like the things like tempo and uh, assessing threats, yeah. like, I had learned about these things before, but as I've been playing in the last couple of weeks, I've really been asking myself at the start of each move, all right, what's his threat? Can I get a tempo? And, can I bring another in? <clears throat> and so. probably the most important lesson that someone can take from it is that even if you learn something more than once and you hear us talking about it, it doesn't mean that you already know it and you can ignore it or, or just no. uh, feel like no, uh, you've mastered everything. Absolutely not. No, and, no, absolutely I, not. I like... Uh, to repeat things that I already know. Even now, I feel like in a way it affects my 
awareness of these things a little bit more. So yeah. it's a good idea to repeat things you already know in order to apply them better. And uh, there's always room for improvement and awareness. So especially when it comes to to these questions and uh, the tempi. So bishop d4 looks good. G takes h5 is the testing move. So I'm glad he played it. I wanted to calculate it. Uh, let me ask you, did you see it in advance? This move gh5? Uh, <clears throat> gh gh5 said again yeah the one the, the position on the board like after bishop d4 he he took your bishop yeah i i sacrificed that bishop that wasn't a blunder i just figured like there's so many pieces mm -hmm. over there this has to be this has to be winning for me yeah, yeah it looks winning and uh, <clears throat> it feels like you should win rook g2 check feels right um king h1 is the only move and now i see you casted long but I'm trying to think, maybe there is something more concrete, so to speak. So, uh, if you play, yeah, but it's not so easy. I mean, castling long I mean, is the most just, natural move to bring the rook to the game. I mean, you would still, your move is the best move here, right? Just rook takes, rook yeah, takes nine? Yeah, but here it's not as dangerous, uh, because after king takes, queen takes h3, then he has queen f3. And uh, um, you cannot play rook g8 check anymore. So, I mean, you okay, do win yeah. the rook on a1, but uh, I don't think it's worth it. So, I mean, and it's, it might be protected, I'm not sure. So, um, <laughs> so here... Uh, it, is, it is protected by the other rook. Though. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, technically you could change the order. You could take the, the rook first, and now queen a1 will lose to queen h3. And uh, you will mate him. Yeah. Okay. So, I guess, I mean, the materialistic way to approach it is maybe even to take on a1 uh, first and then sacrifice your rook. But I like the idea of, of bringing another piece r rather than taking material. So, Castle yeah. Long definitely looks right, unless you can find a defense for him, which is very difficult to calculate even when you see the board. So, Queen f3. Looks like the logical move for him, which he played actually. And now, well, he, he lets you grab his rook, but uh, he obviously attacks some of your pieces as well. The knight on f4. Yeah, the at this point I was a little, I was a little stumped. Because he's attacking my, my knight there, which is, which is guarding my, my rook. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, this part I felt like I kind of felt the attack slipping away from me. Mm -hmm. So... I feel like a good move would be rook to g8 here. Because now, if he takes on f4, then I want to go bishop e5. Like, uh, uh, like okay. I see that you yeah, did that's... at the last at the end of the game here. You... Yeah, that's devastating, isn't it? Yeah, and if he moves the queen, there is rook h2 mate. So, yeah. I don't see a defense for him. And the problem with the move that you played uh, after bishop e5 is that you don't have any direct immediate threat that I can see. And uh, you give him time to to increase uh, the defense. So I'm not sure what he could do, but uh, an idea that comes to mind if I'm not missing uh, something, that it might be rook a3 and to join the defense somehow. And maybe if he has another move to play queen takes g2 or something. But uh, okay, it's very complicated. And uh, the, the point is that bishop e5 doesn't is not uh, uh, bringing a new piece because the bishop is still part of the game part of the yeah. attack in a way so bringing okay. the rook will be a little bit more active okay all right and also of course you have to anticipate that queen f4 fails and then it's obvious that the rook g8 is a good move yeah so not sure if it's the best but uh, good enough is uh, is uh, something i can live with so, and, so what did I play here? I don't, oh, I don't remember way, what I, I played. To... No, never mind. I, I thought there was a forced mate if he takes on f4, but I want to. But it doesn't work. Let me just demonstrate. So rook g8. I was thinking queen f4. You have rook g1, and then queen h3. But after queen h2, I think uh, there is no way to proceed. Yeah, it gets a little yeah. not great after that. Yeah. So it's mainly about calculation. So queen f3, bishop e5. And yeah, now it feels like the attack is not as as powerful as it was earlier, 
because of uh, you wasting one move is is more than enough uh, if if he if he punishes you so ninety two yeah this doesn't add any more pieces to the defense it in fact takes this knight away from his king so it doesn't feel right I don't like it this felt move. pretty. I, I I hated that move seeing that because yeah, I don't know how to keep Yeah, because the rook is him. hanging, but it, it feels like a mistake uh, uh, from my point of view. And just to quickly point out, if you play rook g8 and he takes, he still cannot take back. Because he still of can't take. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's I mean you don't even have to. I mean it, it, it's pretty uh, logical because he didn't add more pieces and you you did add another piece by playing rook g8 so uh, let me take let me take this over real quick i'm going to back this up sure. so at this point all right so what was i looking at here okay so instead of <clears throat> I wonder if there. I was wondering. All right, never mind. You go ahead. Take the reins. It's all you. Yeah. We're on. Uh, night takes night. Yeah. So, in this position, knight takes knight. Bishop takes a. F Wait. So. In the game, I played bishop e5, knight e2, rook d g8. Okay. So. That's exactly what you played. I didn't notice. I thought I was analyzing a variation, but that's the move you actually played. You brought the rook to the game. He's not threatening knight f4. Uh, it's just exchanging pieces, but now you have basically four different pieces, yeah? In yeah. the attack versus basically one piece in the defense. This was a fun game. Going yeah. over this was. And I, I yeah, think this really is already like lost for him. So, knight 2 was uh, probably the mistake that ruined. Uh, what might have been a better position from for white so yeah now rook h2 mate is a threat and if it takes then you have queen takes h3 yeah yeah i think so, i did get a mate here yeah so i'm very yeah he, he he brought his rook over and then i mated him so he brought his rook over to um g1 mm -hmm. and he didn't give his his poor his poor king a spot to move yeah so, well, let me uh, let me call out some people that subscribe to the stream and stuff like no that. Problem. I'm gonna meet myself for about one minute. I'll be right back. No problem.